Alright, so phase one is remove the inverter. So, I'm going to start by getting rid of lots of these little cable ties here. Eye on that, and that's out of our way. That can just uh, go down there. Makes all the electrical connections to the inverter very simple. So, next up now, I want to remove the um, high voltage uh, connections inside the main junction box. So let's get that lid off. So, it's quite simple. You got two 13 millimeter studs there to remove. To simplify uh, removing these cables, I'm going to simply take them off with the gland. So I'm going to take the lock nut off the gland on the back. And then remove the cable. Along with the gland. Now is just to keep everything safe. Just pop the lid back onto that box. Just put down the two center line screws there. All right. So next thing we got to do is we got to disconnect hmm, coolant. Two coolant lines. Going to the inverter. What I do is just gonna remove the hose clips, just back them off. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. We want to use the So in order to give myself some extra room to work with to unbolt the inverter, I'm going to remove the automatic I'm going to remove the automatic um, gearbox controller box 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 here. Hopefully leave me a nice bit of space there. I'll be able to use for the air conditioning. Decided Panzer needs aircon. Now these should be all 13s. We should have one and two going in there. So uh, 13. Hopefully you'll get this for me. Oh, they're not locked. Of course they are. Oh, that's good. Come on, where are you? Come on. Got him. Okay, inverter unbolted. Okay, so the only thing that should be left attached or attaching the inverter to the car is the three phase wires going to the motor. I have unscrewed 
the encoder cable from down here uh, from the motor so what I'm hoping to be able to do now is to lift the inverter up and back here to give me space then to undo my phase cables and I did leave them long enough so fingers crossed um, that I'll have enough capacity to do that so I suppose here we go I'm going to lose some coolant in here for certain. This is one big engine bay, um, least of which uh, you can see here. Ooh, oops, oh, okay, I guess that could work as well. Okay, it's one way to do it, Damien. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Okay, so it is fairly tight down here, though. That being said, okay, I'm going to get a block of wood and just support that up there so we can undo this. Okay, and we'll box cover. I'm wrong folks, I'm way wrong. You leave the body of the gland in there, and we just pull the cable through, um, which is a much better kettle of fish. I had actually forgotten uh, how we did that last time. So that's a lot easier. I'm trying to do what I was doing. <sighs> yeah, one more to go. And that's my three phases disconnected. Let's just walk it out this way. Oops. Of course, it's trying to dump coolant on top of the battery. Alright, so next job is we got to remove the four torque converter bolts um, which are joining our motor uh, flex plate onto the torque converter because we want to be able to take the gearbox out from underneath the car uh, completely separate. Uh oh. Uh oh, completely separate uh, to the motor. The plan is we're going to lift the motor out um, up to the top, but I want to let the gearbox out on the bottom, such as my ground plan. Just the first one out. So I'm going to rotate around just with my fingers, just move the flex plate around. Uh, till we get to the next one. And we'll keep on doing this and we get all four out. guys it's all four power converter bolts out so as Eric the car guy would say I've identified two targets of opportunity here being these uh, bolts going into the top of the adapter plate from the bell housing. I decided I'm going to take those out now 
as getting to them uh, from underneath the car would be extremely difficult. So these weren't really here to hold the <coughs> gearbox to the adapter plate. They were more there for holding the inverter on. They're only eight millimeter, but we still need to have them out of here. So that's what we're doing. Alrighty guys, so the situation right now is we have the inverter removed from the car uh, with all the brackets taken out, everything's disconnected. Uh, we have also removed the four bolts from the torque converter and the uppermost two bolts uh, from the bell housing. So next plan, I'm going to close the bonnet down because it is raining still and uh, jack up the car and get underneath and uh, let's start getting stuff off there. Okay folks, time to disconnect the drive shaft. Pay strict attention as your certified BMW technician gets to work. In this case, certifiable BMW technician gets to work. Okay, time for certifiable BMW technician action. So, I don't know if I'll even be able to get on the back of that bolt, but oh yay, I think I will. I don't know how this is going to work for me, but maybe not won't work at all. Mm. you know beginner's luck of course I won't be able to those bolts out but that doesn't matter okay on to the next one okay last one there we go okay around the back impacto rancho not going on oh, there's always something isn't there Bingo. Okay, differential flange bolts, take two. This time, the selector in park. There's one. And six. One well, of the advantages of not having a petrol tank here, folks, is we've got a lot more space to work. Okay, take one. Oh, okay. This could work. Crap. Emergency. Spot. Spot. Ah. Crap. Okay. 
Okay. That was way too easy. Let's see if we can get the other end off. Okay. Oh, wait a second. There's something happening here. Uh, what it is. Uh, it's not precisely clear. That's it. Spot. Dry shafts out. Whee! So it's time to start disconnecting stuff. Uh, electrical connection here to the gearbox. And we got one here. So I just gotta undo that. Like so. Get out of the way. It's gonna rest against my head. Not RPM connection. Comes off there. Get rid of that. That can also rest on my head. Uh, well, not particularly. I'm going to even wedge that up there somewhere just temporarily. There we go. Okay. So, one of the things we got to get rid of now is our um, transmission fluid cooler lines, of which we have two. So, what I'm going to do is a kind of a forlorn hope that I might actually be able to disconnect them. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do is just to pull these Jubilee clips back a bit so that we can hopefully put a plug into these hoses. We try and use a spark plug, another trick from Eric the car guy. Alright, let's get this one done similarly. Come on. Alright, so let's see if this one wants to disconnect. I'm guessing it probably doesn't really. Um, I don't have time to waste down here trying to coax that off. So we will employ the services of the universal disconnection tool and as soon as I'm sure I have a tray here to catch the inevitable spillage of course it managed to avoid the tray but we got it another problem we won't have with our nice manual Actually managed to catch the tray that time. That's a surprise. All right, we are going to let those two drain out before we do anything else. All righty, so I've gone ahead off camera and got out the top, the hard to reach bell housing bolts. So I got a couple more here I want to remove. Then I want to loosen the last two. And then we'll be set to unbolt the cross member and hopefully slide this thing back and out of here. So, got my nice uh, flexi drives and ball end hex keys. So, uh, working out to have been a good purchase. And I got these specially for the job. Um, it might actually with a shorter one on that, but let's see how we get on with this one. There we go. Okay, that one's nice and loose. And I hate this creeper, it is such a piece of crap. It has to be unbelievable. So, this guy over here now is going to get the same treatment. There we go. 
me is now loosened. Okay, so there's now only two bolts in our bell housing set up here. So next up is we got to get a jack in here, support this, unbolt the cross member, and take out these two bolts, and then. All right, so. Part we gotta do is we gotta undo these uh, cross member bolts. So do is gonna loosen all of them. But I'm gonna only take out two, obviously, because I'm still in underneath it here. And I ain't that crazy. Okay. So then. There we go. And there's two. So right now, the jack positioned kind of where I think most of the center point of the way it'll be. And I'm gonna come in here at the side. I'm gonna remove the outstanding cross member bolt here okay that one is out Sorry if it's not the best camera work guys, but I'm kind of trying not to get myself killed here uh, while doing this. Okay, this one's coming. Hey, folks. Yeah, here we go, alright. I'm just hitting in there. There it is. Okay, it's only one more bell housing bolt now. Then we start moving. Seriously, it's out. It's out. It's out. Okay, gonna have one last check uh, up front, and then I am going to start moving this gearbox out. Uh, I'm gonna move you guys back to here. Hopefully, you can still see everything reasonably well and uh, should be clear of any, well, the inevitable car clang when that happens. Yeah. Time for precision uh, removal. You can come back this way, gearboxy. Oh, here we go. Here it goes. Wow. Oh, I mean, um, of course, uh, we have professionally uh, disengaged this automatic gearbox. Well, I mean, uh, <coughs> Yes, uh, as planned, working properly. Okay guys, need you to keep an eye on this. This could go bad.
Hey guys, so a little bit of help from the E39, we have the automatic gearbox out of the Panda. Okay folks, uh, that is the automatic gearbox removed from the Panzer. Um, went very w well, I was extremely happy with, with that for a first uh, part of our project here. So um, next part of the plan now will be to get the flex plate and the adapter plate removed from the motor and then we're going to remove the motor from the car and then we will start the procedure of um, mating our Siemens motor up with our nice uh, five-speed manual gearbox. Uh, so we'll be going into uh, detail on how we do the adapter plate coupler and get everything lined up. Uh, we'll also uh, then be looking at stripping out the automatic shifter uh, from inside the car and pretty much getting um, pretty much uh, getting ready then to put the new uh, drivetrain back into the car and get our drive shafts uh, made to match. So okay guys, thanks a lot for watching. Um, thanks to everyone, by the way, uh, that made very helpful uh, suggestions on the last video when I was just kind of discussing uh, the procedure. Uh, I, got, I got a lot of very good help there and I do very much appreciate that. So thanks folks and we'll catch you in the next part. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, if you like my projects, uh, please consider uh, supporting me on Patreon. There will be a link in the description for that. Okay, until next time.